Okay. So it does appear that your application is complete. So that's excellent. I do need to ask you to sign here. Just. Okay. So, yes. of this at the end of your interview um, before you leave the building. Now, I know this has been a very uh, secretive process. Uh, as you know, there are security issues why we need to keep it so. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about the project known as The Grid. Um, our world was under attack uh, a number of years ago um, and humanity was being brought down um, by electromagnetic and other spectrum non-visible wavelengths and the way that we have um, been counteracting this uh, for the last, I would say, 150 years um, is through application of a grid designed to cancel out um, the most debilitating uh, of these wavelengths. Now, as you know, humans are very sensitive to uh, many different uh, waves and energies Although we're only able to perceive a certain, um, a very limited spectrum of those wavelengths, uh, either visually, auditorily, or um, through our physical senses, uh, through our body touch. However, um, we are affected by the entire spectrum. Uh, I'd like to, um, for example, ultraviolet wavelengths can damage the skin and cause cancers. Um, X-rays, um, we've, we managed to utilize those for certain diagnostic purposes, but over time, long-term exposure to concentrated x-rays will also cause cancer. Um, now, I have to tell you that the energies of the grid uh, that you will be working with uh, once you have completed all of your training and your orientation period, these energies are very intense and um, as part of your post you would be processing a certain um, amount of these energies directly through your body uh, not only your subtle etheric body but your physical body as well and the stresses um, while we have discovered ways to make it much more manageable it's not unusual for um, individuals to experience um, sometimes significant, although that's becoming less so as we get more refined with our techniques, but health issues. And um, so I did see in your packet and application that you've You've read the waivers, and you have indicated that you are aware of these risks, so um, that's excellent. Your, your role is a critical one in order to guard the safety and future of mankind. So, um, the personality assessment that we had you take at the beginning of your intake uh, was really critical in determining if you had the right temperament for this work. Um, because you will be tried, and uh, it's just, it, it just can be difficult to maintain your post. But in this region, um, 
we've been shorthanded and it's been causing stresses in other areas of the grid. So we are, we're really looking to get 10 premium candidates, very, very strong candidates and get them, um, aligned and, um, installed as quickly as possible. So, um, now, you were asking me earlier, right, right, so I wanted to show you in the brochure, okay, here we are, so, now, can you see here, right, so, regarding your posting an installation into the grid, um, this is just a, a diagram. This isn't necessarily how it exactly looks because, um, again, we're talking about um, energies that are not visible to the human eye. Um, so this is simply a representation of what the grid looks like. And here you can see we sort of stratified the different um, wavelengths. Mm -hmm. So here... here. Mm -hmm. Right. And the way, and it's obvious in, in looking at it, why we refer to it as the grid, right? Um, and although it doesn't line up exactly with um, Earth's navigational latitude and longitude and the lines, because this is a completely different system, and that particular system it doesn't, it doesn't apply because of what we're, we're talking about. Um, you will see that there are, there are areas that are much, much, much more open and then areas where the grid is, um, much denser. And, right, so here, right, along, well, in the United States in particular, which is where you'll be posted, um, you can see along the coastlines in the major metropolitan areas that the grid is much denser, right? And then through the central plains, it's much more open, exactly, right? Now, it's precisely, yes, that's, then that's exactly why it has to do with the number of people that we're trying to protect and reduce the influence of wavelengths upon um, human emotion is very uh, sensitive to um, to the wavelengths of the cosmos and um, we were evolved to be able to handle a certain level of certain types of wavelengths, but as I said, we've, uh, and this is not to frighten you, but you do need to know, this is an important part of the process, um, due to outside influences that are completely beyond our control, and we do have reason to believe that there are deleterious forces, um, aimed at undermining mankind's evolution and our happiness, if you will. So there are directed uh, wavelengths um, being placed upon Earth, which is what has made uh, creating and maintaining the grid as critical a mission as it is. Now, I saw... Um, yes, that's right. Yes, but I saw your, well, your military background is, is certainly, um, a big part of why we chose you for this, because of the urgency of the situation, um, in the region where you'll be posted. Um, there has been quite a bit of additional turmoil lately. And our instruments are indicating 
increased levels of um, certain negative wavelengths. Um, right, exactly, right. So it's mission critical, as you said, to um, to get you through this, get you oriented, and get you posted as quickly as possible. And the fact that you have such a strong military background and you um, you're at liberty to um, to devote your life to this because this will be unfortunately this will be a lifelong posting. There isn't yet a way to safely um, unalign someone or uninstall someone from the grid. Right. Exactly. It's because of the way that we have to link each um, bandwidth into your chakras and your subtle body. Uh, it, it, you would probably um, become very, very ill at the best. So, um, the other issue being that, of course, where we post you is where you will need to stay for the duration of your life and you are going into an area of high turmoil but I see that you've been there before so and you're familiar with the people you'll probably assimilate right into the culture um, now the wonderful part of this posting is that there won't be um, any real day-to-day -day responsibilities for you um, your role is simply to be there and you're physically being there um, both on, a, on the physical plane and on the etheric is sufficient um, again after your training and so on so the bulk of your time will be spent in uh, whatever relaxation and entertainment you can um, avail yourself of you will receive a salary that will be more than enough to um, enable you to enjoy all of the uh, all of the activities available to you in this region. Um, now it's not uh, the it is yes that's right it's it's not in direct military conflict at this point in time so um, and they've been doing a lot of rebuilding so you should you should be able to have a fairly relaxed and enjoyable lifestyle. Um, now, I'm <laughs> some of the counselors, some of the intake counselors will um, go so far as to suggest that it's male club med or you know, this would be partying all the time. And um, it's it's certainly true. And if that is something that you choose to um, enjoy or in ball yourself with. The agency has absolutely no care of what you do with your time. It is completely up to you. Um, we will, su uh, yes, we will provide as much technical support as you need. Um, if you have questions um, in your area, there might be a way for you to occasionally meet up with um, others in your unit, although that's, that's an unusual situation. Usually the, um, uh, the postings are far enough away from each other that it makes it completely impossible. And, uh, I'm not, I'm not aware that, um, we don't advertise typically, um, others. This is a unique situation simply again, because of the turmoil that we're trying to manage. Usually all of the training takes place in single unit sessions, um, correct individual sessions, and, but your unit will consist of 10 individuals, and so this is, this is a highly, um, unusual case, and I think there will be a few of you that live, um, and are posted in close enough proximity that, um, yeah, I think, I think all of you overlap the same city as part of your 
part of your postings. So if that was something that you'd be interested in, that would be lovely. Um, not everyone in your unit speaks the same native language, but... Um, Right, that is available to you. Now, I am i don't want to go so far as to suggest it's going to be fun and games. Um, I know that there can be real issues in uh, adjusting to the energy drain. Um, or just simply the processing of the energies can be... Um, can be very difficult, and I find that most of the newly posted um, folks, and even some long-timers, um, they do spend the bulk of their time simply just managing, um, managing symptoms, managing pain, um, managing diet, and just to be able to feel relatively normal, um, now, we, some of the people who have been involved longer, and we do have some people who um, are on a longer term project that I can't really tell you anything more about other than this warning, um, that, um, okay, yes, here. You can see what I'm referring to. There are, on the other side of the, the, um, the enemy combatants, in this case, if you will, what we're encountering uh, is at certain parts of the solar cycle here, um, there are increased wavelengths from Saturn and Jupiter uh, we're not exactly sure why this is. We do have uh, um, probes heading out that way in order to get more information to find out why that is. But when it occurs, um, it's it's possible that direct communication wavelengths will. Um, come to you. Um, we believe that enemy combatants find ways to send telepathic communications to our, um, to our units. And the reason that this can be dangerous is, um, that on the etheric, agreements are able to be made in um, commitments are able to be made, and there are um, shifts in political alignment that can end up um, harming you and uh, creating a multi-lifetime link to the grid uh, to enforce your... Um, cooperation over multiple lifetimes, and um, although our standards are much, much, much higher now for entry than they were back in the day, uh, over, over several lifetimes this can really severely damage one or more of your chakras, sometimes permanently, and then you carry that damage into future lifetimes. So I I need to warn you of that particular risk, so pay, pay close attention to that part of the training. Right, here it is. Psychic warfare. Right, well, because we have to, um, exactly, so what we will be doing in that section, in the psychic warfare section is, um, here. We will be showing you how to, um, identify attacks and how to block them. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
So I will put this back in your packet. That's going to be an important part of your training. So um, it certainly won't have been uh, anything that you've encountered in, in your lifetime thus far, not even with your advanced military training. All right, so that covers all that part of the paperwork. There's one last thing I need to get you to sign. And if you wouldn't mind, um, I also have a survey here that if, if you'd be so kind, um, We're reviewing some of our intake practices, and um, at this stage, we realize that we've been through quite a few different stages in your application process, and you've spent the better part of a day here, and we appreciate and respect your time. Um, we'd uh, like to get some of your feedback regarding this process, how you felt about it, uh, how it might have changed your perceptions from the moment you walked into the door until this point in the process. So, um, tell me, how do you feel, um, Now, when you first walked in the door, what were your initial impressions about what this program would entail? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And, um, when you received your initial stage packet, um, How long did it take from the time that you received your initial stage packet to the time you were called to hand in your blue paper? Mm -hmm. Okay. And after you handed in your blue paper, what was the very next thing you were told to do? Oh, really? Okay. for the confusion in that. Um, this is why we do things thoroughly. So, so um, I'll definitely be passing that feedback along and I apologize for the confusion at that point. Right. Okay, and so when, when you approached the physical aptitude barriers, um, what what did you initially see at that point? Okay, well that's good. <laughs> All right, and then once you entered in, what was the process that they took you through when you were in the decontamination area? Mm -hmm. Did they go completely over the corridor or were they And it was the black ones. Okay, good. All right. And now, finally, um, before you were in the waiting area just outside, um, right, at what point did they hand you back your bag of belongings? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then were you given the opportunity to check 
through all your belongings. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you told them that. Okay. Did they give you a chip? A recovery chip. Okay. All right. Hmm. All right, before you leave, I'm actually going to have you talk to someone about All right. And then do you affirm that these statements are true and correct? Great. Okay. Can I have you sign here, please? Thank you very much. All right. Well, uh, again, thank you so much for your time. Um, we're very grateful for your commitment to our world and to the future of mankind. And we will give you every support that we have available to us in order to sh ensure that you have a um, much success and as fruitful and productive a life as possible. So, right. Now, if you could just step right outside into this vestibule, I will get the supervisor for you um, in order to handle you on that piece of belonging. Mm -hmm. Great, here she comes now. Okay. Oh, look, she has it. There it is. Good. I guess they were just waiting for you to finish. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Um, here is the information packet with everything that you've signed and all of the releases.